What's up, YouTube? It's Silly Girl. Today, I'm going to be doing a little unboxing setup of Midwest Girl Kit's Ecosphere 2.0 kit. As you can see, everyone's super excited that we got this. <laughs> um, so let's get started. So when you get the kit, it's a huge box. You get a huge box, and then inside of the huge box, there are three other boxes. The first box had the climate control unit. The second box has, you know, some foil and the instruction guide and like a little ziplock. And then the third box is the greenhouse. So we are gonna kick things off by building our greenhouse. You will see me using a rubber mallet in this. Um, probably not necessary, but it did help just keep things secure, you know? Um, so I started off, there's gonna be a bunch of long metal poles and a bunch of short metal poles and then like some plastic pieces. So those plastic pieces, you'll connect three longer poles to the side and then I connected the other plastic piece and then you'll put four of the shorter poles going vertically up and then just keep going up, building up from there. Um, yeah, until you get to the top where it's just kind of like that curved piece, which is where you would put the fifth level if you purchase that with your ecosphere, um, right at that top bracket. Once you've built your base, uh, you can add your shelves. <laughs> Gotta boop the cat. Um, <laughs> and we're gonna secure those down with a zip tie. The shiny side facing you, ridge side down. Go ahead and secure it. Make sure that little chunky piece is at the bottom. You don't want it at the top because then you could pierce bags or whatever you have in there. So make sure it's at the bottom, trim it up, and then repeat on all the shelves. Um, I had some extra zip ties lying around, so I was able to do four, one in each corner. I'll be honest, I don't think that'd be possible with the amount they give you, but one in each opposite corner, so like two per shelf, should work. It should be just fine. So now we're gonna add the tent cover, which was my least favorite part. It took me forever to unfold this. But if I can get through it, so can you. Just be very careful. Um, it's plastic, so it could rip, but just keep unfolding and unfolding, and it should do should do it um yeah so just put that over the base um there are little strings at the bottom that i tied down and now we're gonna add the tarp underneath to prevent any spillage of water so the tarp is really big uh, so just spread that out put your tent over it you want a couple inches three or four inches i'd say i don't know i don't know a good chunk enough to fold over just fold it over and see how much you need i don't know but anyways the tarp is so big that you can cut it in half and double up the tarp, which I did. Why not? Um, and then you're going to put your tent over it and then just kind of fold the corners in. Like if you watched my mono bag series, which you should have, um, we did that with our, our liner. So you're just going to kind of fold the edges over and just secure it with those clamps over the over the poles. Isn't she gorgeous? So next we'll be adding our filters for air exchange. So the easiest way that I found to do this was to stick the filter on. You want it to be a couple of inches above the shelf. You don't want it to be in level with the substrate because it could dry it out. So like just like a couple, an inch above where your substrate would be. So stick the filter on and then grab, I used an exacto knife, something super sharp. Um, but not sharp enough to pierce. It's, it's a really thick filter, so. Um, I used an X-Acto knife and I just cut around the edge and it was so simple. Another way that you could do this that I tried is I grabbed a random jar. It's my painting jar, so it's a little dirty. Don't mind that. Um, and then I drew around the edge, which I'm not very good at, <laughs> but then after I traced it, I just kind of cut the hole from there and then I stuck the filter on and I hated it. I didn't like it. I liked the first method a lot better, but you can do whatever you want to do. <laughs> um, anyways, now we're going to set up our climate control unit. So we're going to rinse off our lava rocks. I had an oh shit moment and was like, is this going to clog my sink? But it didn't. Woohoo. Um, so rinse those off really well and then add them to your pan suggestion. Um, I've heard that if you add some aluminum foil in between the pan and the rocks, it will help prevent it from rusting and getting slimy and whatnot. So, pro tip. So add your water till it's 90% full, almost all the way full, and then take out the bulb and you're gonna screw that in to your climate unit base. The writing on mine felt a little weird, 
but I got it in there. It was secure. It wasn't wobbling around. I know these are made by an electrician, so I trust it. And it worked perfectly after I plugged it in. I felt it getting hot like immediately. So I unplugged it and then we're going to set up the whole thing. So take out the fan and the port, which is kind of hard to find. It's in that little plastic bag inside of another plastic bag. Um, so take that out and you're going to set that up. It should be on that little, the left side of your climate control base, that little platform. That's where it's supposed to go. Um, I had to add an extension cord because the fan cord was not long enough. <laughs> but yes, so now you're going to plug the climate control base into the provided temperature controller. This will heat the, the unit as needed to maintain that temperature that you set it to. I set mine to 74 degrees. You can switch it from Celsius to Fahrenheit by holding the up arrow or the down arrow for a couple seconds. Took me a little while to figure that out. But you're going to snake that through the bottom of the tent and hook that up to the top. Um, you can zip tie it or there's like that little suction cup thing. Suction cup thing did not stick very well to mine, but it's staying and it's working and I love it. It's cool. I haven't even add the, added the humidifier yet and it's still at 99% humidity, so cool. Now we're going to add the humidifier that I was just talking about. So for this, um, that little fogger piece will go inside and that little, I don't know, silicone -y piece goes through that center of the lid. You have to kind of like twist it and push it in um, just till the edges are up there. Make sure that the cord is long enough for the fogger to sit at the bottom of the jar. You don't want it to be like floating around in space or anything. And then you'll add that large black hose that's in the big Ziploc bag in the kit and put that through the larger hole. You just want, you want it to be flush with the lid, the, the direction guide said, so you really just want it to be like barely in there, just, just barely in there. And then the blue hose will go on the other side. You want that one to be about an inch inside the jar. You don't need it in the water or anything. You want about two to three inches of water in there. Definitely at least enough to cover the fogger, I'd say. But um, I used water that I fill my water bottle with. And then that blue hose is gonna be connected to the air pump. So the air pump will push fresh air in and then the black hose will push out that foggy, misty air. This works really well. <laughs> I'm honestly surprised by how well it works. It was like, puffing up immediately so cool I clearly got a little excited I forgot to add the little putty that they include mine worked without it but I figured I'd put it in here since it's in the door it's in the directions um, so you just take a little piece of that and just stick it around the hoses it's to prevent any air from leaking or something like that to make sure it functions properly. <laughs> I did cut a hole in my tent for the, the hose for the, the fogger humidifier unit. Um, otherwise you can just put it inside the tent by the climate control unit, but I just, I don't want to have to deal. I don't want to do, I don't know. Why, I don't know why I do what I do, but I just, I cut the hole and set it outside the tent. And then once I uh, you know, snaked the hose through. I secured it with the zip tie just to make sure it will stay in place and be able to reach all the potential trays that I'll be putting in there. <laughs> so my tent is set up in a very well lit room, gets lots of natural light, but they do include two different lights for you if you need them. Um, the spotlight super cool, just either sneak that through the top or hang it over outside of the tent, whatever. More so if you like have this in a closet or something. But one of the great things about using the tent is that you can use it for all processes, all stages of the, the growing cycle. So if you do this, you're gonna want to incubate on the bottom levels and then fruit on the top levels because humidity will be highest there. But I got mine all set up and it has been super fun. I'm happy that they provide this. I'm gonna be mixing up some trays and adding them into this tent soon. So. Hopefully I'm <laughs> going to film my progress on that and be able to do more of a, an in-depth breakdown of just how to regulate everything and get it under wraps. But 
Thanks so much for watching. Um, like and subscribe and comment what you want to see, what you like, what you don't comment, what you don't like. <laughs> um, but thank you. Bye-bye.